So we've marked on the in the letters the, the red dots the main burning sites, and then the the light blue lines that you see around the outside are permissive footpaths. So you can get it just goes to show you can get to see a lot of the reservoir now from footpaths, um, which is fantastic. So well done to the water company and uh, wildlife trust for sort of all that sort of access out. So you're going to kick off with site number A then, Matt? Yes, so A is Labour and Causeway. So that is Labour and Causeway. I didn't want to stand in the middle of the road, so I need the picture off Google Maps, but there you go. Um, and Labour and is the westmost causeway. It's the oldest kind of causeway, I think. Um, the view back across to the main causeway is this one here. This is the view that Richie Gannon had of all of us stood on there with his zoom lens, obviously. These were all just taken with a wide angle lens to show you the, the idea of what you can see. Um, and what sort of birds, you know, what, what what's good for Mayor Breton? It's good for uh, ducks. I mean, it's great for, I mean, obviously it's great for cormorants. Cormorants nest in the trees either side that you can see there, left and right. Yep. It's great for diving ducks. Good for smew. Certainly smew there at the moment. Uh, first winter male smew. Um, yeah, and obviously when the water level drops, it can be quite good for waders around the outside. Um, but this is always good in the art, looking uh, east in the afternoon if it's a sunny day because the sun's behind you. Mm. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, we didn't take a picture of the west because it was really strong sun and it would just wouldn't have come out. But so west side's great in the morning when the sun's behind you. East side's better in the afternoon. So cool. uh, um, geese are kind of there. The white fronts like this area, don't they? Yeah, of course, and the white fronts and the pink footed geese are often yeah. on this area. So if anyone wants to go and see them, hang around the Lower Breton Causeway, you might get to see the white fronts and the pink foot. Um, and in the in dusk, if you're if you're ever at Aberton at dusk, do yourself a favour and just stop at Lower Breton. Yeah. Um, because you'll get the corvid roost, all the rooks and jackdaw. I mean, there must be five thousand jackdaws, yeah. I reckon. Yeah. Or and if you can't do evenings, early mornings good as well. First light. Yeah. Yeah. Roost is excellent. <coughs> yeah, but the, the corvids are just spectacular, and the noise is amazing in that. Well worth seeing. Right, so we're on so, to B, and B is the Leia de la Haye Causeway. So again, often people don't know which one's which. So Leia de la Haye is the furthest east. It's the newest causeway. It's got the new kind of raised embankment here for, for viewing and water retention and so on and so forth. Um, so if we look uh, west, you're looking back towards Leia Breton Causeway. And if you look east, you're looking towards the pumping station. You can just see in the distance there. Again, these are taken with wide angles, so things are going to look a bit smaller. Um, and if you kind of just look to the left of the pumping station around a bit, the pumping station's over there now. You've got the visitor centre and the actual reserve is this area of land here, um, which we're going to cover briefly in a second. Um, so what's, uh, what, what's there at the moment? Again, I mean, that's great, great. The Scorp, the Scorp yeah. have been off the uh, east side of the Leia Del Hay Causeway, um, as well as Long-Tailed Duck. It's been really good the last few months for Great White Egret, um, in, in, especially the pike-eating the one that uh, likes to eat pike. Yeah. Uh, great for um, waders as well. At the moment, the water levels are starting to go up the last week or so, but there's still quite a few black tailed godwits and there's red shank. The rock pipits love this causeway. It's got a very shingly, shingly sort of bank to it, so they love picking amongst the uh, rocks. Oh, what else? Um, might get grey wag, might you? Grey wag tail on there. Yeah. yeah. Red um, shank, good for. Yeah. And obviously in the, in the spring and summer, um, this is the area that the, um, uh, oh my goodness, uh, oh. Little Ring Plovers, Little Ring Plovers, sorry, LRPs. And and they, they, they love this area. They quite often um, breed successfully at Aberton, don't they? So um, always good to look for them as well. Right, C, you've got the main reservoir here. So um, the main reservoir, to be fair, we didn't have time to go on there to take pictures yesterday. We, <sighs> right. Even the idea of this, we were going to meet at sunrise and we were going to do a whole tour of Aberton, take loads of pictures and bits and bobs. And then the night before, um, Steve texted me and said, do you fancy going and finding hawfinch and red-breasted goose in the morning? So basically half past seven in the morning, we were kind of down in the woods at um, Blake, Blake Woods, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, looking at the hawfinch. Then we went red-breasted goose. So we didn't actually start Aberton until about midday. And I had to be home for two. So it was a whistle-stop tour. We didn't go into the reserve. But we've nicked some pictures from their website. So you've got the main visitor centre, everyone knows. The hides, you've got, um, this is Hyde Bay Hyde, which is the one to the north. So um, if we go back to the map really quickly, that's Hyde Bay just here. This one over here is Ireland Hyde. And then the one to the south is Gwen's Hyde. And then that's where the visitor centre is. So you've got sort of four features on there. Visitor, 
Hyde Bay Hyde, which looks over the Hyde Bay um, area. Island Hyde that looks east towards the pumping station. And Gwen's Hyde that looks north. Um, so I guess, what time of the day to go to these hides? Yeah, so, so well, Gwen's Hyde looks south. Oh, south, sorry, south. Yeah, so really not a great idea to go to Gwen's Hyde if it's sunny, in the because you're looking due south during the day. But overcast, it's fine. I mean, Hyde Bay Hyde's great all times of the day because it looks north. And then again, Island Hyde's probably better in the afternoon when the sun moves around a little bit. But okay. great. They're, they just give you that open water aspect. So great mm. for cold and eye. Long-tailed ducks have been seen. Buick swans have been knocking around sort of from Hyde Bay or Island Hyde. And is she going to pick up a winter grebe and maybe a black a black neck grebe or a slav? Yep. Um, then again, you know, Hyde Bay or Island Hyde, worth, really worth scanning that mid-distance water because you just get that extra view that you can't get from the main causeway. Um so yeah, you can pick out those, those little tiny birds if you're lucky, um, and they do like around by the pumping station, don't they? They do, and they and they're also yeah, they're, it's just that deeper water they like, yeah. and the holes are really big and spacious, so you know plenty of room inside. Yeah, raining. Good stuff, right? That's hide. So uh, D, so D is billets. So for anyone that doesn't know where billets is, um, it's got a big letter D hovering over it when you're driving along the road, really. Um, so, <laughs> Um, Billets is just south of the, the main La de la Haye uh, causeway and um, again good old Google Maps you've got a sign on the right hand side and literally just turn in here as you turn in here there's a car park immediately on your left after you turned in um, park in here free parking there's a gate just over in the corner here so you just walk up this approach you've got the hide or, or viewing area hasn't got a roof um, but again, this gives you a different view. So you've got Wigbra Bay, which we're covering in a second but over there. If you sort of pan around to the left, you're looking back towards the pumping station and the view you get off the main causeway. But this gives you a different view, doesn't it, Steve? It does, yeah. I mean, again, it just gives you that, that view of, it's much more, tends to be much more shallower water. And again, this is really good in the afternoon if it's sunny. Uh, again, this hide's got disabled access or this screen. So there's a ramp up to it. So if, you know, if you look, you know, yeah, pick the ramp. There you go. There's the ramp. Just be careful if it's icy or wet that that ramp yeah. is a bit uh, slippery sometimes. Just to be aware of. There's been some good, but I mean, the, the, the red throated dive was off there, wasn't it? Um, it's, it's a really good place in the spring for things like Arctic tern, little gulls. Mm. Um, it's good for waders. I mean, in the autumn, it was brilliant for little stints and. Um, what else was there pectoral sandpiper there uh, that, i think that was more towards wig but i think it might have come along this bit as well but i mean i had, I had my first first ever uh, bonaparte's goal here oh, yeah. um do you remember that new year's day two or three years ago yeah we were watching black throated diver i remember and swallow swallow flying around <laughs> same time bizarre. on new year's day there's a swallow flying around out here and there's a black throated diver on the water kind so always worth a look billets you know yeah. if, you, if you, you might not seem like it because it's a short distance but you do see different things from there definitely um right oh and of course uh it's a good it's the best place on the reserve to see chicken <laughs> but, uh, this was a male yesterday displaying <laughs> in the car park we, we, i thought you were going to go into an id feature there steve this is a male as you can see it's got the nice red bright red wattle and <laughs> <laughs> oh sweet little thing right anyway um E, so E is Wigbra Bay. So I guess this, this is Wigbra Bay itself here because Wigbra is down here somewhere off the map. Um, and Wigbra Bay, um, I haven't got a picture of the road, but basically as you're driving south past Billets, there's a, a lay bar on your left uh, by a little kissing gate. You can park in there. It's always worth having a look over the road um, because you can just look over this gate. And this field, you can see on the right hand side, there's a flood there at the moment. Um, I mean, there's, you know, there's been things seen that there's been water pipit in this field um, in the past. There's been uh, little ring plovers in there in the spring. What else has there been there, Steve? Uh, it's a really good place to see uh, geese. Yeah. Been goose there in the past few years. The white front's quite like these fields at the moment as well, either there, either the causeway or these fields. Cool. Um, the grey parts, which has been seen in there in the past as well. Um, so always worth having a quick scan. It only takes a few seconds to, to just have a look and look at the post as well. You might get a raptor or something if you're really lucky. 
Um, with Rabat itself, so you, you go through the kissing gate down a slightly muddy path, you need to get some boots on, um, but then you get into this field here, this is kind of a sheep field, and you've got the Wig Bay viewing screen hide thing um, with some fairly steep steps, but you can just stand over here to the right and you can get some nice views. And Wigbra Bay again, um, similar habitat to billets, but what's, what's, what's it good for there? Again, this is really, this is in, the, in, the, in the autumn and winter, this is really shallow water, so brilliant place for waders. There's always a flock of godwits, lapwings, um, brilliant for pintail in the, in the autumn and winter. Again, that's shallow water. Um, and it's probably one of the best places for Buick Swan. Um, okay. so, and on our EBS field trip a couple of weeks ago, we there was 120 snipe, minimum of 120 snipe. I think Simon Wood had 160, I think, on this yeah. lagoon. Uh, uh, that's a phenomenal sight, but you know, again, well worth a watch. Mm. I mean, I've I've had I can't remember how many it was, 20 or 30 green shank all around the edges at one point. That was a year or two ago. Um, you get golden plover there. Through the winter sometimes mixed with the lap wings um pectoral sand that was that's been seen on here last year i think yep. um so yeah again another really good area um and oh uh, hen harriers you sometimes get a hen harrier flapping around or peregrine won't you yep. it's a good place for raptors yeah yep. hobbies in the summertime the hobbies will be um, hunting dragonfly over here had a couple of them last year hunting dragonflies so really good area good good place to watch um Slight word, word of warning though, uh, a bit of health and safety. Um, as, as we were leaving the Wigbra Bay screen area, Steve um, tripped and, and nearly fell flat on his face in the mud um, on this rather uh, dangerous looking clump of grass. So um, please beware uh, anyone going there um, of this nasty looking clump, clump of grass. Okay. It was the only clump of grass in the whole field and I almost tripped over and broke my neck. <laughs> oh, anyway, what? right, moving on, F, where are we? So F up here, now this is where a lot of people um, do get the church is mixed up and to be fair I, I, I often do as well so F is Layer Church and um, I just remember it because it's near Layer Breton Causeway um, G which we'll come to in a second is Aberton Church so Layer Church um, this is looking back down towards the reserve the reason I've put this picture in here is there's a little um, you can't quite see the sign but this is a public footpath and this is one of the public footpaths that's on Steve's map so this is this public footpath here you can actually follow it through you can kind of walk right the way around behind the pumping station kind of right around through the field behind the dam and you can come out kind of at the, at the other church and even walk right, right the way around through to Peldon Bay and, and Lodge Lane so um, that's how to find that just by the church church itself is yeah just look back at the church and you can park kind of in here or just outside don't block the gate there's a gate leading south towards the um, reservoir please don't block that um, allow access to that because the water company needs to get through if you do walk past the gate you can walk past the gate it's a pedestrian access and then this is where or one of the best places you can view from you can get your scope right up against this kind of um, railing here and you'll be able to look straight through and not see the railings at all um, and you get this lovely view of Hyde Bay so Hyde Bay Hyde is over there I think yeah pretty yeah. much yeah, yeah. Um, so you get it's just a different view of, of Hyde Bay um, and it's a quick view as well you can pull over in your car have a quick scan pick out any any bits and pieces so what are you likely to see here I guess pretty Buicks I was just replying sorry Jonathan oh. just replied about his blind nights up from footpath near F so I was, oh. just, I was just replying to him so my apologies sorry <laughs> okay yeah, so Buicks Buicks Spew there at the moment or has been. Yep. Uh, it's a great place for waders, green sandpiper, um, black tailed godwits. It's just good for greater uh, dabbling ducks, you know, widgeon, teal, shoveler. Yep. Uh, of course, you've got a nice big pile in the middle here as well, so that's always worth a look for peregrine. Yeah, absolutely. Um, quite often you'll see a peregrine sat on there, or maybe kestrels. And um, if you're really lucky, you might even get a raven. There's, there's, there's been one or two flapping around Aberton for the last year or so on and off. Um, so always worth looking for big crows. Um, and Marsh Harrier, yep. you can get Marsh Harrier across the bottom here. Um, so yeah, really good area. Right, oh, that's a slightly better view of it, there you go, sorry. Um, so yeah, again, you can see right round, you know, past the, this is obviously all the reserve here, of course, looking from the other end. Um, so you, you turn raft just over here, loads of stuff. And there's some pools, you can't see them, but if you look to the left, there's some little pools there. And in fact, when we, when we went there, um, when was it, yesterday? Um, there was Buick swans on there, wasn't there, yesterday? 
yeah, yeah. So well worth a look, well worth a visit. Um, right. So that's F. So G. So G to get there by road, you kind of have to go drive north, turn right at the crossroads, and then you kind of stay on the road uh, for about a couple of miles, something in that region. Yeah, yeah. And you will eventually find, if I go to this one first, so you'll be coming along this road from the reservoir. And then you've got this kind of fencing and hay and log place on the corner. Um, the road is Rectory Lane and there's a, a white church sign saying Aberton Church. So you just turn into there. Um, Aberton Church itself, this was taken from the other side of the reservoir, but um, different church. And this is the viewpoint area, which we're going to look at in a second. And you're going to be walking down here. Um, so you can park by the church, of course. And then as you go through the little uh, metal kissing gate, um, you've got two choices. You can, this is the path that goes back towards the other church eventually, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and then you can turn left down here towards the viewpoint. And the viewpoint, you end up walking along a, a lovely um, little track with bushes either side. Really good to look out for finches, yellow hammers. You might get reed bunting along here. Uh, thrushes, of course, a red wing field fair um, this time of year. So worth looking along that area. And then the viewpoint itself, I want to say a, a thank you to um, the Water Board and, and Essex Wildlife Trust. Um, also to, um, to Jerry, uh, the, the, the society chairman who, who wrote to the Water Board to request that this area was um, made more accessible for birders. Because originally they put this new fencing up and it was all up here. Yeah, very high. Um, and you couldn't see, see over it at all. And you had to stand on these boxes and the boxes are slippery and there's not enough room. Um, so following a request, I think that was, did Daryl Rhymes meet up with people? Yeah, he did, yeah, he met with the water company and they've sort of managed to, uh, cut these little, like, viewing holes in the fence now, which makes it so much better. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, even, even someone like me, who's a little bit vertically challenged, um, no problem at all, easily, easily see over the top with your pair of bins. So you get a nice views back across to the pumping station, um, so you've got the pumping station again just over here on the left. This area, this is the dam over here, so um, you, you can't see this area from anywhere else really, not, not, in, not, not in any detail anyway. Um, and this is where the Great Northern Diver relatively recently was, was kind of hanging around. And also the, um, the Redneck Grebe has been seen in this area as well, hasn't it, from the church? It's a great place for Goosander, Goldeneye, because it's the deepest water on the whole reservoir. Yeah, in fact, if I go back there, there's, there's little pools. I don't know if they're, I think they're dry at the moment, but sometimes you get little pools form around here. And I think there was quite a lot of curlew sandpiper there a couple of winters ago. Yeah. And little yeah, stink as well. So yeah, great place. You do need, I will say, you do need a scope if you go here because everything does tend to be quite distant. Yeah. So well, I think that's kind of, that's pretty much the same with a lot of places at Round Aberton, isn't it? But, but also, um, the afternoon, best to go in the morning rather than the afternoon if it's sunny. <coughs> excuse me um the other side so if, if you kind of if you stood here and turned round and look the other way um again they've they've cut that fence down as well and you can look over here and that's not not the best picture in the world but um there is actually a fence that runs along here and then kind of off into the distance and there's also on the left here you can just about see one of them there's telegraph poles and this is a really good area to look for stone chat and um corn bunting um so i don't know if there's been too many corn bunting seen there recently to be fair but it's always the place to have a look, um, particularly on the telegraph wires. It's worth a scan. Uh, yeah. You never know, you, you might get lucky. Right, moving on. G, um, uh, no, that was G, wasn't it? Right, H. <laughs> so H, now this is, um, this is Peldon Community Hall. And the reason we put this on here is, um, you'll see in a second, at the end of Lodge Lane, um, there's been a, a, an issue recently, not with any society members, we don't think, but there's been an issue with one or two birders parking at the end and blocking uh, the area for, for the local residents. So um, this is the best place to park if you want to visit the Lodge Lane viewpoint. Park at the Peldon Community Hall and you just kind of come out and turn left and just walk about five minutes and then, then you're at the bottom of, of Lodge Lane. Um, plenty of parking here as you can see. Lodge Lane itself, so that's the community, community hall here. Lodge Lane is kind of here, so you walk along here and then the actual two areas we're going to look at, I and J, You've got a screen and you've got like a, a viewing area. So end of Lodge Lane, this is where people were park, parking. So just to make it clear, please don't park here. Um, and then you just walk straight on through this gate. 
and you've got the choice of either going left or kind of straight on really um, or you can turn right so this is where you go down to the viewing screen over Peldon Bay this is the lodge lane um, view screen lodge lane approach you can see the pumping station here you're much closer to the pumping station than you are from anywhere else um, and the screen itself as you can see it's got a cover um, plenty of uh, access for scope and binocular viewing and um, you get some good views of that area what sort of thing might you pick up there if you're lucky and it, you know, deep water again but it's been really good recently for um it's a good place to see peregrine um there's been smew there buick swan again well i know we keep mentioning the same species but um it's great for great white egrets and there's a massive raft of um great christy grebe normally get off there so well worth having a scan through um goosander and again and there were a couple of common scoter i found off there a few weeks ago so oh. It's, again, it's well worth a visit. It's a bit of an underwatched area, this is. So, I mean, the walk is well worth it. Um, sorry, just quickly looking at the chat. I do apologise. I think I said Chigbra earlier on, didn't I? I meant to say Wigbra. Oh, OK. Yeah. yeah sorry, not, not Chigbra. Uh, that's, that's, a, that's a different place altogether. Um, right, we'll come back to chat in a minute. So um, that's the view from the actual screen itself. Nice area, as you can see. Um, and then finally, we've got Jay. So if you were to turn right through the gate, you're then going to go down this path. Now, at the moment, it's muddy. So you would need to take a bit of care down there. But it's it's worth it because you get to stand in the mud, obviously. Um, and you can look out over the, the screen here. You can have a sit down and a cup of coffee if you want to. And this is Peldon Bay. Um, so again, it's an area that you can't really see from anywhere else. I mean, these, these little pools here, have they been in the Buicks here as well recently? Buicks, yeah, the Buicks, so where I'm, there I am in the picture there, where I'm looking down towards the left there, there's been a lagoon right below us, and there's been, I think there's been three or four smew there, um, the Buicks have been there as well, but that area that you can see, like, oh, in the distance, in the right-hand corner, that's a great place for waders in the autumn, it's normally where it gets the first amount of mud, and there's been, you know, I've seen curlew sand, little stints, you know, there's often, it's just a brilliant place, I mean, mm. Abertus, Abiton's just looking so good the last few years. Mm. And it's just worth visiting these areas because, you, you, you know, you get views like this. Um, you can't get that view from anywhere else. And it's, it's worth doing. So many people kind of go to the causeways and then go home or, or go somewhere else. Um, and I need to, I mean, I, I'm, I'm as guilty as, as, as anyone. I don't go to this area as much as I should. So it doesn't take long. And like Steve said, you're going to get to see things that you wouldn't see otherwise. So it's well worth a look. Um, and I think that's just the same view. So that's looking right towards those little sort of shallow areas and the lagoons. And that's looking left towards the pump station. Yeah. And I think that's it. So that's our whistle stop tour of Aberton Reservoir. Right. So, there's just been a couple of questions. Uh, okay. Steve, Steve's just, Steve Swinney's just asked, can you walk around the whole Aberton site on public footpaths, taking in these viewing areas? If I bring up the map again quickly, yeah. hang on. So you you can or cycle. Yeah, I mean certainly I'm not sure what it oh. would be like to cycle around because some of the paths are quite muddy, but yeah, I'm sure you could mount him. But is it, they're bridleways, a lot of them are bridleways. Okay. So the only bit the bay so the only bit you can't do is this southern this southern bit um of the reservoir, the bit that hasn't got the blue line going around, that would involve walking or cycling along public roads. Um, which sort of take you away from the reservoir. You, you end uh, up going through Chigbra, don't you? <laughs> sure, don't. You're confused <laughs> <me> now. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, those footpaths, yeah, you could cycle. I mean, you certainly can walk round. I mean, it's a good, it's a good walk round, but um, you'd get to see the best of the reservoir, certainly. Obviously, you can stop at the centre for a cup of tea on your way round. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, what's the distance what if you were to kind of park at the church here and walk this way and then back again what sort of distance roughly do you think you're looking at well i mean certainly i mean i, I often to go to lodge lane i park at g and then walk to j and i right but it takes me to a couple of hours to do that it's probably about okay. two to three miles maybe I, i'm not really sure but obviously on the way you're, you're, you're seeing again different views different habitat as well aren't you absolutely yeah i mean um and John Norgate said, you, yeah, he's just commented and said you can cycle or walk all the way around, but some of it has to be via the road. Right, gotcha. 
Okay. And um, blind blind nights. I must admit, I'm not familiar. So he said it's um, yes. up your, your F. You move your mouse to the right of F along that blue line until it goes up. Oh, right here. Blind nights is that house, that little bit of land you can see just there. Yeah, that's blind oh, nights. Okay. Cool. You can okay. see that it's the centre. It's like a very big house up on the the hill. Gotcha. Okay. The footpath right past there. That's where the puffin was seen from in like November time. Oh, okay, yeah, because it was kind of round. Actually, in fact, because this little bit here, again, you can't really see that very well because lots of areas are blocked, aren't they? So I, when I looked for it unsuccessfully, I kind of walked and stood about here, probably. That's, I think that's where I saw it. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. I might. I've, I've never. You know what? I've actually never done these walks. So actually, here I am. Here I am. You know, showing people and never done it myself. So I need to do it really. A walk from F across to Blind Nights. I mean, I won't. So, you know. It's well worth it. I mean, mm. one of those places that not many people go to. Um, it's well worth checking out. I mean, I'm sure yeah. they be found. You the know. thing is, you could, you could park at either church, and you could either walk between churches, yeah. or like you said, you could walk from Abbotton Church through to Lodge Lane and back again. Yep. And they're really good walks. Yeah, and obviously, you've got, obviously, you've got the circular walk between causeways as well. That's the other one you can do: park on the main causeway and just walk around a big circle. Um, yeah, brilliant, yes. fantastic. We hope this feature, and um, we hope this feature will just, for those who don't know Aberton well, will just give you an idea of like the best places to view from. You know, and if you, if you want us to feature any other sites or, you know, let us know because we're mm. more than happy to feature other sites, you know, in the coming months. Yeah. And if, if you want to send in pictures, you know, just your local site where you bird from, yeah. I mean, if you, if you want to do like a map or something, you can send it in to us and we can show it and feature it. Um, just let's just try and share some of the places that we go birding because it's always good to know these places. You, you know, you read names and things, but you don't know where places are, do you? And you can't always find them on Google. 